Hello, my name is Sufiane Mouragi, and today I'm going to present Precise Plus, a computational method that predicts drug response in patients by nonlinear subspace based transfer learning from cell line and PDX models. So in this work, we want to predict drug response in patients. However, we are statistically limited by the amount of drug response data. On the other hand, preclinical models, such as cell lines or PDX, even though they show different behaviors in real human tumors, they are characterized by large-scale drug screens. So the, a wide range of drugs have been, have been tested for these cell lines or PDX and are more amenable to statistical analysis. So what we want to do is to transfer drug response predictors from these model systems to patients. To do so, we make use of four datasets. So one for the so the GDC one thousand for the cell line, Novartis PTX for the PDX, and two uh, patient cohort TCGA for primary tumors, and we introduce a new uh, cohort of metastatic samples, so HMF or Hartwig Medical Foundation, that has that corresponds to a thousand forty nine samples. The drug response is measured uh, for cell lines as AUC or area under the curve, best average response for PDX, and resist clinical criterion. For uh, for TCGA and the HMF patients. So first, I'm going to present Precise Plus, that generates nonlinear subspace representations to transfer predictors of response from preclinical models to, to human tumors. If you want to know more about this presentation, we have a bioarchive preprint uh, that you can check, or you can of course talk uh, with me during the during during the conference. So the first thing that we do with Precise Plus is to compute a similarity between preclinical samples and tumors and between uh, so between preclinical samples uh, between tumors and uh, across data sets so this is these four matrices here so the similarity or the kernel is something that you have to fix beforehand we then use uh, preclinical and tumors in two batches and uh, with kernel pca we reduce the dimensionality so we compute uh, a batch of preclinical nonlinear principal components and a batch of tumor nonlinear principal components so represented by these two matrices, by these two matrices alpha s and alpha t. We then compare them using the notion of cosine similarity matrix that can be uh, easily computed as shown here. So this this cosine similarity computes the so the similarity between each preclinical nonlinear PC and each tumor nonlinear PC here on the x-axis. And what we see here, so zero means uh, orthogonality, one means the same, uh, the same vector. And what we observe here is that the similarity are scattered. There is not a one-on-one -on -one similarity that will be uh, shown by a diagonal. So we fix this problem using this, the notion of principal vectors. And principal vectors are pairs of vectors, so one vector from the preclinical, one vector from the tumor, that are now, now as you can see, aligned. So we have now a one-on-one -on -one similarity. However, the similarity is not perfect, and basically each pair of vector is uh, is made of correlated, uh, so almost almost similar but not quite. So in order to to select one single vector, we perform interpolation. So uh, within each pair, we draw an arc between the preclinical and the tumor principal vectors, and we select uh, one vector in between that best balances the effect of preclinical and tumor signal. This is what we call the consensus features. We then use these consensus features to project both preclinical and tumor data, and we train a drug response predictor on the tumor data, on the on the preclinical data, and apply it on the tumor. We first use Precise Plus to model the impact of nonlinearities uh, in the cell line to PDX study. So here is to take the cell lines at the PDX. We apply Precise Plus. So we compute the consensus features. We project both data set GDSC and PDXC. We use the GDSC projected to train an elastic net, so we don't use any data from PDX. And we co correlate with the Spearman correlation, the predicted AUC, so the AUC we obtain after Precise Plus, uh, on the PDX with the known best average response. So we make use of the uh, Gaussian similarity, so to model nonlinearities. And uh, this similarity is characterized by a single scaling factor, gamma, that increases uh, with an um, amount of nonlinearity. So what you see here, on the, uh, the x-axis is the scaling factor gamma, and the y-axis is the amount of uh, linearity, second, uh, uh, second order uh, interaction and higher order interaction for the consensus features on average. And what, you, what we see here is that when the scaling factor gamma increases, the amount of nonlinearity decreases and the interaction increases uh, up, up to a certain point. So gamma is really a good measure of, 
of interaction of uh, of nonlinearities. So we first went to predict a lotinib. So here, what you see on the on the x-axis is different values of gamma, a baseline, so not without any domain adaptation. We use elastic that here and linear, so which is um, precise plus uh, precise plus with linear uh, or just our former method precise. And on the y-axis, you see the Spearman correlation between the predicted AUC and PDX and the known um, the known best average response. We see here that basically uh, the uh, nonlinear precise does a bit does better than uh, than linear precise for certain values of gamma. We observe the same thing for six other drugs, and from here we observe that all of the the best value of gamma for these seven drugs here is between 10 to the power minus 4 and 10 to the power minus 3, and we take the average of these two values for the rest for when we go to, to human tumors. So now that we have calibrated our approach and that we, uh, and that we show the proof of concept that it works between silence and PDX, we use this calibrated precise plus to, uh, to go to the human patients. So what we do is to predict the, uh, the AUC for each, uh, for each patient. And then we use, uh, so we measure basically the, the, uh, the man Whitney, the man Whitney association between predicted AUC and respondent and responder, and we compute the FX size. Uh, we show it here for each drug as the, so the, in the, this volcano plot with a square for the precise plus with a cycle for precise and with a triangle for baseline. And what we observe here is that for uh, carboplatin, gemcitabine, uh, and irinotecan, we have a better association between uh, for precise plus and for the other. For trastuzumab, we have a better association for precise. And for oxaliplatin, it's roughly it's roughly similar. We also observe that we do way better than the uh, we do better than the, than the baseline for all of them, all of these drugs. And then when we go to TCGA, what we observe is that uh, precise plus does better than uh, than precise for cis cisplatin, paclitaxel, carboplatin, gemcitabine, etoposide, and trastuzumab. Uh, sorry, not for estoposide, but for, for trastuzumab. And then precise does better uh, than precise plus and estoposide, and we do better than the baseline with precise plus um, for all of the drugs. So to conclude, we show that precise plus captures complex nonlinear gene combination that are important for both preclinical models and tumors. We use the Gaussian similarity matrix and calibrated precise plus uh, when going from cell lines to, 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 uh, to PDX. And we show with a precise present improvement in five drugs for TCGA and four drugs for the HMF dataset. So we'd like to thank the people the, involved in this project, and mostly the co-authors and, uh, and my supervisors, Lord Weig Vessels, Marcel Heinders, and Marco Loch. I'd like to thank uh, the Hartwig Medical Foundation, uh, ZonMV for funding. You can find the paper here, and I'd like to thank you for and take any question.